boy. Five, four, three, two, one. Hyperdrive initiated. Afternoon. I know it's a uh, early start to the episode, usually starting at 3 p.m., but today we're doing at noon because I was going to take Friday off, got my new MAGA hat on, and, well, it's a special episode, so this one might go a little bit longer than normal, but this is The Brian Show. I am your host, Brian Howard. We're going to break down. There is an absolute insurrection by the radical left on the United States. And it's undeniable, coming at all angles. We're going to break it down. They're coming at you through, as we already knew, the deep state, the media, Hollywood, Democrats, obviously. We have corporations, sports, other countries, terrorist organizations. It's coming in at all angles. And we're going to have to figure out a way to combat all this, but I'm going to have to first expose where these insurrections are taking place. As you know, uh, as you know, there is Antifa just riding on the streets in Seattle. We have a whole new country in Seattle, as you, which Antifa took over. So now there's a new country because until it's enforced, those six blocks are no longer American territory until we have law enforcement to force in constitutional rights. This is a play. I'm going to expose how this has actually been a planned insurrection. Now, you know, I'm not a big conspiracy theorist, but it's getting hard to not realize facts that the virus was not saying man-made, not saying released on purpose. But I am saying it was overplayed and it was planned to use that as a way to expose power grab for the left. And you'll see they're still continuing with it. But this goes back further. This goes back further than that, this planning. It goes back to even... It goes back to even the... 1619 project. So this is all the, the, the left. They had control of all of our institutions. All of them. And that is known. It's a fact. So the media was a play of this. And it starts back with the 1619 project. Now, obviously, this is a play that's been going on before then. But I feel like the radicalized movement started with the 1619 project of them trying to really gin up racial tensions in the United States. So the 1619 project from the New York Times, which won a Pulitzer Prize, which is absolutely absurd considering the fact that it has been labeled as completely fake history and written completely terribly by all Historians have called it fake, falsified, and really should be discredited. The 1619 Project, New York Times wrote, it's literally just anti-American racism. That America didn't start until 1619 is when it truly started. Because that's when we brought in slaves. And it goes about how just America's racist black people are great. But hey, I have nothing against black people. They are great. They've done a lot for this country. And we did have slavery. That is wrong. But 
It is to demonize American values, to discredit America. And the whole point of the 1619 Project is to make it where we should overthrow our institutions, our culture, everything. Because we're just, it's systematic racism. That's what the 1619 Project from the New York Times is about. What do you think they're fighting right now today? Overthrowing our institutions, our culture. Literally going after everything. So it seems like last year, late last year, the 1619 Project was started. Ginned up. And they're wanting to teach this in grade school now to kids, which is a false history which has been recognized by all historians. So we got this ginned up already that the left was able to do. And because it's easier to gin up uh, racial fire inside black people because the left figured it out, communists figured it out because, well, obviously they were wronged in the past. There was slavery, which was wrong. But now we're seeing it come to life and we're seeing it by starting with the tearing down of statues. Tearing down of statues. So here is, because we'll start with the Christopher Columbus one. The Christopher, Christopher Columbus in Minneapolis tearing down this statue, which, by the way, was given to us by a foreigner and made by a foreigner. But they tore it down because he wrongly is accused of creating genocide, which he's never done, by the way. It's completely bogus accusation. But here is them tearing down the Christopher Columbus statue. All those cheers, they should all be ashamed of themselves. Absolutely ashamed of themselves. It's disgusting. Christopher, Col Christopher Columbus is an American hero. Disgusting, despicable. Tearing down our statues, our culture, our history. Why? Because that's what the communist movement is all about. It doesn't stop there. Because, you know, the Democrats and the radical left, they're after the Confederate soldiers. Which, hey, you know what? You want to have a conversation about removing Confederate statues uh, in government houses outside. I actually am up for the debate. I'm not saying I will fully agree with it. But it's at least an argument, and we can at least come to the conclusion of, let's not destroy it. We still need the statue. So if you want to have a conversation we can talk about putting it in some kind of a museum. I prefer to keep them where they're at, but destroying the statues are wrong. So here's one, though, where these Antifa pricks go out and destroy the, uh, in Virginia, Portsmouth, Portsmouth, Virginia, where they tear down Confederate statues, which, by the way, when this statue falls now you you can't get a good see in the cam video i'm gonna show you i didn't want to show you the video where you actually can clearly see it fall on the person because it is kind of rough to watch we don't even know i i can't even sit here and tell you if the guy's alive or not right now but last i knew it wasn't good so here is uh the statue of them tearing it down confederate soldiers in portsmouth virginia What did you see? Um, we uh, witnessed, um, we were you know, taking down the, the monument, the Confederate monument, and uh, there was an individual in the front. Uh, they were pulling on a cord, and they had been working at the legs for some time. They had been trying to get it uh, down. And then there was a gentleman who was directly in front of the statue. And when the statue finally did get away, it came and fully 
hit him in the head. And uh, we could see that his skull was actually showing. He was convulsing on the ground. He lost a, a, a great amount of blood. And um, we were just asking everybody to pray for that man right now. Uh, so I wasn't able to get his Yeah. This is what we're at. These radical activists, terrorists, Antifa, and Black Lives Matter tearing down statues. There is no debate on if we get to keep them or not. Tearing it down. And potentially killed one of the people doing it as well when it fell down on them. And honestly, because it hit them in the head and their skull, as you heard, his skull was showing after it hit him and he was convulsing. If he lives, probably going to have some form of brain damage. This is why we are supposed to have debates, not radicalism, not radicalism. You don't go in the streets and tear it down. Ironically, ironically, the statues that are still standing is because uh, you, you know, the Democrats are trying to rename military camps after Confederate so, uh, soldiers, military which, again, fine, we can have this debate. I am not really in agreement with you, but I am at least open to the debate of renaming them and removing, but still securing safely the statues because they should still, they are still historical. I'm not saying I agree with it, but I am up for the debate. But Democrats don't even want to have the debate. It's just their way or the highway. And obviously, Trump has said he's not going to rename these bases, which he shouldn't. He shouldn't, because it's in bad faith. It's in bad faith to rename them. And that's the other thing, is if we're going to have this debate, let's do it in good faith. Not for political posturing. But here's some statues that, for some reason, they don't want touched. So, in West Virginia city capital... The uh, Senator Robert Byrd, as you all know, Joe Biden's mentor, Robert Byrd, Senator Democrat Robert Byrd, from 1959 through 2010, his statue in West Virginia Capitol is still standing. No Democrats are calling for it to be removed. Kind of odd because we're removing Confederate soldiers. This guy is an exalted Cyclops of the Ku Klux Klan. A Democrat that was in Senator in 2010 till the day he died. But they don't want that removed. They don't mention Robert Byrd being removed. Probably because they want people, they want people to ignore that. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, we, we still had KKK members in our, in our ranks up to 2010, just 10 years ago. And the guy who's running for president is a Democrat. Well, that he was mentored by him. Yeah, this this statue doesn't. It seems to be hidden on the Democrat side. It's oh no no no, we don't need that going down. But then there's another statue, another statue. How about Lenin, Vladimir Lenin in Seattle? Yeah, they have a Vladimir Lenin, this Bolshevik that led the communist revolution in Russia and created the Soviet Union. And he was one of the greatest murderous people in, in history of human. Vladimir Lenin has his own statue in Seattle. Washington, the state of Washington, Seattle, the city. He has his own statue. But guess what? That statue was not touched. Kind of odd, isn't it? Kind of odd. Certain statues of pretty awful people are surviving this. Seems like we're only going after an agenda here. An agenda, something that fits the political narratives, that follows party line. Which, by the way, Vladimir Lenin's statue actually should be removed and torn down by citizens. It's a joke, and it's horrific you would have his statue in America. Now, this cancel culture has gone beyond repair now. The moment with all this breaking out, 
the moment with all of this breaking out. They, the, and this is where corporate and Hollywood is all coming in at us. So we have now seen them go after and cancel the show Cops. Yes, 31 years on air, they canceled the show Cops because it portrays police officers in a positive light. Going after our culture, people. This is an insurrection on all. This isn't just after Trump, people. This is after America. How about Live PD? They'd go and cancel Live PD as well, which is a very popular show. Now, my brother's a huge fan. I personally, I mean, I never really got into it. But either way, huge show. A lot of popularity in it. Canceled because it shows police officers in a positive light. Lego. Yes, Legos have even jumped in this fray. Legos are removing and pulling all the police Legos. Because it displays police in a positive light. We're defunding the police people, removing our institutions, removing statues. But does, it's even gotten more ridiculous than that. Paw Patrol. Now, Paw Patrol is a Nickelodeon cartoon, apparently. It's not canceled yet, but they're going for it. They're gunning for it. They've been calling for the canceling of Paw Patrol. A kid's show of puppies because it portrays police in a positive light and when i say the reasoning of portraying police in a positive light that is actually why they're canceling it not just me insinuating it that's actually what the call is to cancel for we are witnessing an institutional our culture just being brought down because what is it the communists want these socialists they are looking to bring in their socialist ideas their socialist government but they've been having issues to do it in america because we have a culture a culture that rejects rejects the socialist narrative and if you guys read this book, I recommend it. The Naked Communist by Cleon Skuzin, W. Cleon Skuzin. Go buy it. Buy it right now. You want to know everything, what's going on, how the attack on America is happening and why? It's that. Now let's go ahead and start talking, though, about more. Attacking our movies. A great novel in... Gone with the Wind, this movie has been pulled by HBO. Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind. One of the most popular movies. Now, why is it? Because it has racial undertones. What's ironic here is Haiti is Haiti McDaniel. Is that what her name is? The uh, black actress who was the maid. Uh, yeah, Haiti McDaniel, she was the first black woman to receive an Emmy. But here is, here is her accepting it, and this is what they have canceled. I mean, we're talking about extremes here, people. Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science, fellow members of the motion picture industry, and honored guests. This is one of the happiest moments of my life. And I want to thank each one of you who had a part in selecting me for one of the awards. For your kindness, it has made me feel very, very humble. And I shall always hold it as a beacon for anything that I may be able to do in the future. I sincerely hope I shall always be a credit to my race and to the motion picture industry. My heart is too full to tell you just how I feel. And may I say thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I think it was Oscars. But anyways, we're canceling a movie that brought in an iconic first black woman to get that award. They're going after our culture to such an extreme. 
all at once. We can't even defend it right now because we're just all over the place. They're attacking us on every angle right now, and it's darn near impossible to keep up with it because they are doing it planned. This was not just a reaction. This is not reactionary. This is planned. We're seeing it now with our sports industries. Now the NBA and NFL, that's not a shock. They're going to kneeling for on support of Black Lives Matter, the terrorist organization. Uh, but the two and the three shocks is NHL has been doing that as well. A little less, but still doing it. MLB, same concept. A little less, but still doing it. NASCAR has been the shocker, though. NASCAR. Now, I'm not a big NASCAR fan, but if any of you are NASCAR fans out there, stop watching it today, write a letter to them, and explain you're done until they stop cowering to the radical left. Now, NASCAR is a, uh, it's banned at the Confederate flag, which, fine, I guess, like, if you were doing it for other reasons, not because you bend the knee to the radical left. I am not a big fan of the Confederate flag because it's a Democrat flag. However, however, you're going to remove it because the left says to? That's no, 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 no. Don't be doing that. That's where it's a line. And plus, not to mention, the Confederate flag, yes, it was the Confederate's flag. It was about slavery. That is true. But the people who fly the Confederate flag today, they aren't waving it because they're a bunch of racists that want slavery. To them, what the Confederate flag means is rebellion, rebellious. You know, you're just a rebel. It's a symbol. And I think if we're forgetting the context of this, that's how you lose a culture. That's how you lose a culture. And... People that get upset by the Confederate flag, you're a little bit, get over yourself. Get over yourself. If you're, if you're somebody who votes Democrat and is opposed to the Confederate flag, no, no, you need to get, you're supporting the party of the Confederacy. Get over yourself. It's, it's a f hoax outrage over the Confederate flag. But it doesn't stop there. We saw businesses writing emails and letters out saying they support Black Lives Matter. This is something we're getting attacked and assaulted on, on all fronts of culture. We're even seeing it with our celebrities coming out. So celebrities have came out, which isn't a shock, but I do want you to see this. Because, and then we'll get into the <laughs> Seattle becoming six blocks of it, becoming a whole new country. But I'll show you this celebrity clip real quick and show how this seems just all coincidentally coming all at once, hitting us. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility for every unchecked moment, for every time it was easier to ignore than to call it out for what it was. Every not so funny joke, every unfair stereotype, every blatant injustice, no matter how big or small, every time I remained silent, every time I explained away police brutality or turned a blind eye. I take responsibility. Black people are being slaughtered in the streets killed in their own homes. These are our brothers and sisters, our friends, our family. We are done watching them die. We are no longer bystanders. We will not be idle. Enough is enough. I will no longer allow an unchecked moment. I will no longer allow racist, hurtful words, jokes, stereotypes, no matter how big or small, to be uttered in my presence. I will not turn a blind eye. Going for a jog should not be a death sentence. Sleeping in your own home should not be a death sentence. Playing video games with your nephew should not be a death sentence. Shopping in a store should not be a death sentence. Business as usual should not be life-threatening. I stand against hate. I stand against hate. 
I stand against hate. I stand against hate. I will stand against hate in love. I will make my presence known. And killer cops must be prosecuted. They are murderers. We can turn the tide. It is time to take responsibility. Call out hate. Step up and take action. <laughs> I mean, seriously, come on. That was some terrible acting, by the way. Terrible acting. But come on. Guys, this has been planned. And you know what else was planned? I'll say it. That virus was planned. 100% planned. Again, I don't know. If, I'm not saying it was released intentionally. But we know it's not nearly as deadly. And I think they've known this for a while, but the deep state, as you know, and the media and the Democrats kept saying, well, we got to lock it down. We got to lock it down. Why? Because the economy was so darn good. All of a sudden, the riots break out. This planned insurrection and all of a sudden, oh, the vi no, forget the virus. V riots are dwindling, dwindling. Protest is pretty much non-existent at this point. Oh, virus. Back to the virus. Back to the virus, because Trump's about to have rallies. It's all election year. All of it. And I've had enough. And here's where it's going to get more insane. More insane, because we'll just go ahead and get into it. Seattle. Seattle has lost six blocks. It is now called, is no longer American territory, just so you know. Until we reclaim it, it is legally its own country. There are no laws. There is no constitution. It is actually being ran by a warlord. They have now, this society is <laughs> developing quickly, it has a dang warlord inside of it that's running it now. This is what happens when you bunch of you leftist Fruit Loops do this. You're going to get someone who's crazy that comes in there and he becomes your warlord, creating tyranny upon all of you as a dictator. But as I'll show you, You'll see this insurrection, this plan to take over the, pr the police precinct in the city hall was planned a long time ago, a long time ago. So here is, uh, but we'll get to that in a second and we'll show you how, uh, well, I think I'll show you what it is, an explanation of what happened by an actual Antifa member. So here's a video of an Antifa member who's explaining uh, Chaz, this anonymous, uh, autonomous, not anonymous, autonomous little zone. It means it's country free. So here's what this Antifa member does by explaining it. And I mean, he's a he looks like an Antifa member, but I mean, he does a good job explaining it, though. Here it goes. They created an autonomous zone around the police department. And if you don't know what an autonomous zone is, an autonomous zone essentially means we do not live in the United States of America. We live in our own, you know, call it a country. It's a, it, the thing about it is it is a zone. You know, that's it's a not a state. There is no government. It is an autonomous zone, meaning it operates by itself, from itself, and within itself. Okay, and I, I'm really this is this just makes me want to come. Like you know, it when I see this, when I saw that Minneapolis. So, pretty much is what you're seeing is he explains that it's just their new society. Now they've even declared, and I don't have the signs for this, but they declared it is no longer United States. This is a free zone, autonomous, which as he explained, so this is an actual insurrection. Legally, by definitions, this is a new country. They have literally taken land and the mayor and the governor did nothing. 
So here is the governor when he gets asked, when the governor of Washington is asked about the uh, land being taken over, what does he do? He acts like it never happened. It does, it, he never heard of it. Governor, I'd like to ask you about uh, what's going on in Seattle. There's this uh, thing called the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. What's your thought on that? The fact that the protesters have taken that over and not allowing people to come and go freely? And then, well, regarding the National Guard. Well, that's news to me, so I'll have to reserve any comment about it. I, I, have, not, I have not heard anything about that from any credible source. <laughs> not that you're not credible, it's just like, before I espouse an opinion, I should know of which I speak. <laughs> Keith, you mentioned right. that a follow-up. Yeah, as far as the National Guard, uh, how long are you gonna keep them there? And with, if there is a, a takeover of a street in Seattle where they're barricading, keeping people out, the protesters are, would you want the National Guard to be involved? Uh, you know, that's a hypothetical. Look, at, we've got to have safety. I'm sure that people will find a way to have public yeah, safety well, everywhere. Yeah, as far as the state, I'm confident of that. Uh, the, the National Guard is demobilizing. Over two-thirds of them were demobilized of yesterday. I don't know if they're completely demobilized at this point or not, but if not, that'll be shortly, I believe. Playing dumb. Yeah, I mean, this was national. I mean, kind of national. The mainstream media refused to cover it, but uh, until recently, which, by the way, they glorify it. They glorify it, and they're not reporting it accurately. They're saying it's peaceful. The mayor, the mayor of Seattle, is calling it a summer camp. A summer camp, guys. Yeah, you know, so it's gonna be the summer of love. That's what she's saying. The summer of love. They have taken over. Taken over six blocks of Seattle. Apparently, uh, the city councilwoman in Seattle, I forgot her name, I was trying to think of it and I blanked a little bit, but a city councilwoman led this group of Antifa and Black Lives Matter into this six block range into city hall where they chased out the mayor which by the way she's radically to the left herself they chased her out and then they just gave up gave them the precinct city hall the entire six blocks and now now they are extorting businesses based on ground reports they are extorting businesses within this area for $500 if they want, you know, if they want safety, like the mob. So they go in and say, I need $500 for your security. So in other words, like the mob would do, come in there and say, give us some insurance policy. In other words, you're paying us or else we're going to burn you to the ground. And these businesses have no option because they've been shut down by these lockdowns from the virus, which are already talking about redoing again, which by the way, do not, do not comply. If you have a business, open it up. If they tell you shut down, tell them to go to hell. If they want to see your paperwork, show them the damn constitution. If they don't like that, show them your gun. But, they are running schemes. They are terrorizing people that are living there. And before I get into their warlord, who, by the way, is some rapper on Spotify, <laughs> some local famous rapper. He's not actually worldwide famous, just a local famous rapper, is their warlord within this community now called Chaz. But the I'm going to show you how this was a plan to take over these six blocks because here you're going to see some signs put up. Hell yeah. The point is, Woo! in the end, Welcome to this is our street, Capitol Hill. our station. I am not asking zone. for people to come and hit it up. It's their job. We gave them a lot of money to figure that out. They got the FBI, the CIA, the DEA. 
They had a legitimate street sign made. You don't just get that overnight, people. They've had that for a while. That was planned. That was planned ahead of time to take over the streets. And when you got led in by a city councilwoman of that city, you don't think that maybe they, the Democrats who are a part of planning letting them take this because they just emptied out their precinct? Let them take it. But they got a warlord, so we'll take into this warlord because this is where it's kind of humorous because now they have guns. They built walls. They have guys with AR-15s roaming the streets of this their border because walls work now with the left walls work and there is a need for ar-15s at your border to go through but they have a warlord who has declared uh why they have that so i think this one's the clip for us and they have their firearms so just as a precaution i was there we went, we've been doing the umbrellas, but this guy just shot, just shot us. So if you're legal, legally carrying and all that stuff at the edges, not to, not to scare people, but, and, and with their paperwork, I got mine in my pocket. Again, we don't want that. I really don't want that presence at all. But just watching someone get shot out here, I was there when he ran through the, ran through the crowd and I watched someone get shot. So I'm saying if you do, that would be great if you were over at the barricades and protecting it and just everyone watching out for any kind of weird stuff. But staying focused on what we're here for and not being afraid, okay? So make some noise. No fear, no fear, no fear. So this is the rapper who is now the, the warlord of Chaz. He there in that speech just declared he is the warlord. Now, he's a very violent guy, though. Uh, you'll see here, uh, here he is, if he's, they go around, the, if, they don't see, if they see someone they don't recognize, he runs the streets, so him and his posse will pat you down, and if they don't like it, they'll beat the hell out of you. So here's one where he beats the hell out of somebody. Yeah, we know. You don't know the owner of this place? <laughs> the owner that's actually being nice and letting us stay here? Oh God. Forgot, we are the police of this community now. We are the leaders of this community now. Right, but people do work here and live here. Someone does work here and live here. And you're being disrespectful, that's what the point is. Someone does work here and live here. The precinct ain't destroyed, bro. And we stopped them from doing that. He's gonna get him in a second, just hold on. Sure, probably sure. Yes, that's an Antifa member, likely, but he just doesn't know him, and he's not accepting that. No, bro. Go then. Stop, bro. Go then, bro. Stop. I'm not trying to aid. Get your hands off me, bro. Hey, yo, yo, yo. Hey, bro. Hey, you gonna book up on her, nigga? Chill. Chill. You gonna book up on her? Chill. Uh, this one's a little quicker, but Raz, you know, he gets he gets angry quick. He has a quick flip. They're warlord. So here it goes. Why you doing That's that? not Why the you case. I'm not trying to create this issue. I know that? you're Why a peaceful man. You I'm not, bro. I'm not, even, I'm not even near what you're Why? hearing, Why though. You huh? Why are you doing that? Huh? I said you're not hearing that. But why are you doing that? Bro, I'm not trying to put no why decision. Are you doing this, All I, why are you doing the only thing I said, it's on the tape. Why Look, let me, let's stop the stream. I'll no, stop the stream right now. And 
yeah, that's their warlord, some rapper in Seattle. He's he's they they have I don't I forgot to put the pictures, but he has a rifle at times he's carrying, and they have armed guards, which is quite humorous because they're you know scrawny Antifa members carrying AR-15s, roaming the borders that they've been telling us for all these years, like having walls and armed forces at the walls to keep people from coming in is racist but <laughs> their new country they they apparently have grown to respect for armed guards and ids which by the way that's what he's checking for in the first clip is a guy with an id and the second one as well so you get they like ids they like walls and they like guns in their new world that they claim to have hated us for which is the ironic part now the uh mayor she because president trump he speaks out and he says get this under control or i will because it's a new country now we literally just lost land to a new country and the mayor responds back with this i don't have to tell you about the situation on the ground in your city uh but in terms of how it looks to the rest of the country and the president uh teeing it up as basically ineptitude the ability inability to control your own streets is that fair criticism so I know it will shock you that the president is perhaps not giving an accurate or truthful picture. Um, we've got four blocks in Seattle that you just saw pictures of that is more like a block party atmosphere. It's not an armed takeover. It's not a military junta. Um, we will we will make sure that we can restore this. But we have block parties and, and the like in this part of Seattle all the time. It's It's known for that. So I think the president, number one, there is no threat right now to the public. And we're looking, we're taking that very seriously. We're meeting with businesses and residents. But what the president threatened is illegal and unconstitutional. And the fact that he can think he can just tweet that and not have ramifications is just wrong. The counter will be block parties uh, don't take over a municipal building, let alone a police station, uh, and destroy it, um, basically thumbing their nose at any sense of civic control. Do you believe uh, that you have control of your city and that you would be able to clear those streets? Because you haven't. We do. And the chief of police was in that precinct today with her command staff looking and assessing on, on operational plans. But we saw that it was a point of conflict night after night between the police department and protesters. And we wanted to de-escalate that. And what we decided was the best way to do that was reopen the streets. And that itself ended up with some ramifications for the precinct to remove anything that was valuable from out of that building. But we will make sure that all of Seattle is safe. We're, we take public safety seriously. Um, but the description the president has given is not only wrong, but if it were right, his remedy is wrong. You don't dominate. Remember why we're here. You know, we're here because the nation saw Mr. Floyd murdered. And that lit a match across this country. And we have to acknowledge and know that we have a system that is built on systemic racism. And we have to dismantle that system piece by piece. We have to empower the black community and communities of color. And always trying to spin the narrative back but anyway she blatantly lied obviously the way to stop this is with force these are violent people creating crimes within this community apparently there are reports coming out that and this is coming from the seattle police chief which i will play that clip in a second but that police chief talking about how since they were told to move out out of the precinct by the mayor that there was a, a huge incline in love in this zone. Rapes and crime happening. Rape. Literally rapes in these is going on inside this six block zone known as Chaz. And the police chief is saying, we can't even get in to do deal with it. So here is the police chief. So this mayor outright lied. It's not peaceful. And this is not a block party. This is a new country, and they're causing hell upon Earth on anyone who's inside of it. Now, most of those people are willing, but the uh, rape shouldn't be happening to anybody. And it's quite sad that it is. Uh, so here's the Seattle police chief discussing that. 
Um, our 911 uh, response times have tripled in the area. They've gone from just over five minutes to about 18 minutes. Rapes, robberies, and all sorts of violent acts have been occurring in the area they were not able to get to. So it is not a right for us not to be able to deploy our officers here. Chief Best spoke with protesters several times, and she and command staff evaluated the building and found someone did breach the facility. Uh, there is some damage, and it clearly is a mess around here, so we need to do a lot of cleaning. Yeah, so obviously it did get in, but only they were allowed in the precinct just to check on damages, but they were told they still had to leave. So they could only go in and assess the damage. That's all they could do. Uh, but the fact that this is what the left is protecting and hiding and the media is complicit in hiding this, does that make you question to what involvement do they have? To what involvement? And the media has a history, and same with Joe Biden and many of the Democrats, of outright calling Antifa heroes. Heroes. Here is Antifa. Uh, CNN playing a clip of Antifa Watch, which is a live stream of Antifa film. Now, this is in London, but the fact, though, that CNN was willing to run Antifa film live on their show should say everything for you. So here, here's my evidence, because you know I don't make claims without evidence. Questioning people when one of the men began to resist. After a struggle, one officer was pinned to the ground, and the other officer intervened. Two men were eventually arrested on suspicion of assaulting police. Yeah. Does that not draw some questions here? The connections? The media? The Democrats? In bed with Antifa? The virus randomly disappears when riots break out? The moment they end and Trump rallies are about to begin and states are reopening, the virus is back? Some 120-pound pimple popping leftist fruit loops that have never been in a fight a day of their lives took over six blocks of a city with no force against them you don't just get that unless it's given to you now to show how planned Antifa is, to establish my theme that this has all been a plan, a purpose. Antifa does have guides for attack. So here is Antifa's prep guide when how to deal with combating. You have gas mask, heat resistance, paint, which is to throw at cops' vision uh, for their face shields and what they wear in their mask. Shelters, uh, organized locally, and building projectiles. And then they also had one for soccer players to kick the gas cans that police throw. But then there's this one that's a battle plan of how they do it. They show that they have a shield soldiers, peaceful protesters on one side, a front line on the other, and then they have a fire mage uh, behind all of that. They have flag bears. They have light mage, which is where they light the fire you got barricades a fire squad you got medics cop watch online comms uh and designers and then there's a uh, somewhere in there you have people that go and scout this has all been planned it's well strategized well strategized and we're gonna get into like i was just showing you because it's gonna be a little longer episode because i'm breaking it all down I showed you now how the media, corporations, Hollywood, music industry, Democrats, Antifa are all systematically coming at our culture, cancel culture. But as you already know, there is a deep state and that deep state is a lot deeper than you thought and should scare the hell out of you what kind of insurrection could happen and i will break that down when we come back from this break i 
see you hurt, then I won't take the pain away. I see you hurting so bad, you can't even pray. There ain't nothing or nothing left to do or say. I see you hurting. Keep giving And then you give some more You are a good man Not some wicked wandering joy How you ever ended up In this crazy mess Alright, we're going to get back to it And so we got a lot to break down still not as much, because I made a lot of the aspects of the attacks. We're pretty much hitting the final parts, and in a moment, I'm going to show you how. Well, there is a military potential insurrection we need to worry about that comes against us. Because the one part I didn't think they had was the military, well, that may not be the case. But first, let's get to this defund the police, and then we'll get to that. So, defund the police has been... A big part of the Democrat plan. And it's part of communist takeover on how they are able to get push their plans because they want to replace the current police that are just natural day citizens, normal day citizens, and put in a federal police that is working on behalf of the Socialist Party. So as we know is Democrats are pushing this hard, and the Democrats likely have ties into Antifa. So Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, who is likely a Antifa member at some point in her life, she was a member of the Democrat Socialists of America Club, but not club, but party, which is in bed with Antifa. And most of the members, the younger members in the DSA, are Antifa members as well. So it's likely AOC was an Antifa member of some form in her time, in, in her life. But here is her outright calling for the defunding of the police. This is what political courage is for. Political courage, there are moments in every person's career where you have to stand up and be willing to say, am I willing to sacrifice everything that I have, all the privileges that I have, so that the right thing can, can go through. This is one of those moments. This right now is one of those moments. So if you're an elected official that for any reason is on this call, I'm asking you to ask yourself, what are you willing to sacrifice to make sure that overfunded police departments are defunded? So they're outright calling for defunding the police. This is a mainstream idea now defunding the police now kevin mccarthy republicans uh minority leader in the house spoke out on fox news about this and called out how radical the democrats really want to do this they want to do this more defund the police than they did do want to impeach trump so here comes mccarthy talking about that this movement of defunding the police through the Democratic Party is stronger than impeachment ever was, nor Medicare for all, because they're already taking actions on it. Cities are already doing that. And that's the last thing you want to happen, and it only perpetuates the problem more. We should be providing more money to training. If you look at the recent study by the chiefs of police, 80 percent of them said there's a greater need for training. We want the very best officers out there, so we should provide greater training. We should provide better transparency, the data. We've got a FBI where individuals can put in a data sheet, but only 45 percent of the departments participate in that. And then you want accountability. Ninety-nine percent of all officers believe and put their, put their life on the line to protect and serve us. But what about those one percent mm -hmm. of bad apples? We've got to be able to remove those individuals. And it's normally not the first time when we see it. If we have better performance, better transparency, and better accountability, we will have a much better solution to this problem. I mean, he's right. 
he's right on how we can solve the issue, but also how the Democrats are obsessed with this idea. Now, that should cause a lot of qualms and issues with you about having the police defunded. Matthew Gates, Congressman Matthew Gates, Republican from Florida, he calls out in a hearing about the Democrats funding and supporting a radical organization that is calling for defunding the police and violence in general. So here goes Matthew Gates does a fantastic job calling this out. Here's a tweet from one, two of our congressional colleagues uh, supporting this group, Black Visions Minnesota. And then next, please. And then here's that group, that same group, Black Visions Minnesota, that my congressional colleagues are raising money for, saying that uh, they should, we should end the police. And can we go to the next one? And then here's that same organization retweeting rebel scum, abolish the police. And then here's the same group saying that instead of police, we need therapists, doctors, and street medics, not cops. Mr. Bongino, in your experience, every time someone calls 911, would a therapist or a medic be sufficient, or sometimes do people need cops? I'm quite unclear how a medic is going to help with an armed subject who's assaulting his wife in a domestic violence situation or elsewhere. I'm not sure how that's going to be of any value. And here again is that same group saying that we need lasers to disorient surveillance cameras and we need water balloons filled with milk to throw at people. Again, this is the organization that my congressional colleagues are raising money to support. If we could go to the next one. And then, and then here again, that, that same organization that multiple members of Congress are supporting saying it's not enough to only abolish police or prisons. We need to abolish race. Abolish ICE, abolish the military, abolish the state, abolish the borders. And again, this is what our colleagues are raising money for. And, and, I, and it's not just any member of Congress. It's actually one of our, our treasured colleagues on the Judiciary Committee, the gentle lady from Washington, raising money for this very same organization. Ms. Underwood Jacobs, your brother is someone who was part of this law enforcement community when he gave his life. When you learn that my colleagues in Congress are raising money for an organization that promotes defunding the police, destroying our borders, defunding our military, and taking apart the state altogether, how does that make you feel? Actually, I find that conduct to be deplorable. And we elect officials to represent everyone. And the idea to have our communities without protection and safety is wrong. So my, my response to that would be for people to get out and vote and get the right person in office to ensure that we feel protected and our children feel protected for generations well, to come. This is insanity that these Democrats are even supporting this kind of organization. Now, like I said, these riots have been planned. The virus reaction, the virus reaction, I am calling as planned. They are throwing everything at us all at once. Media is just beating it over the head about racism in America. They are literally trying to wear us down into submission until we just cannot take it anymore. This is their strategy right now. Wear us down with exhaustion of outrage. That's what it is they're doing. That we just eventually submit and say, hell with it. We quit. Now, me personally, I'm not going to because, well, I'm always filled with piss and vinegar. So I'm always up for a good chaos. But Biden... Is somebody who slips up quite often and gives away some kind of helpful information on what the plan may be. Because Biden's not all there in the head. And I think he knows on what's going on with this insurrection. Because, like I said, this is going into now. We already knew the deep state of uh, FBI, CIA, people working on the Trump administration, Republicans, obviously, Democrats all working to do whatever they can to dethrone Trump and put in a 
far left candidate. But the military, the military is involved. And I'm not talking about the military as far as your soldiers. I mean the high ranking generals, extremely high ranking generals. Not all of them, but some of them are involved. And that part alarms me because what could happen is if you are able to remove the police departments like they want, put in a federal level police department, these generals would be the ones who are in charge of the policing, the military policing. So Joe Biden, here's where it gets interesting. I always say, pay attention to things Biden says because he's not all there in the mind and he lets go some potential hidden importance that he knows is planned. So here's Biden on uh, The Daily Show with Oh, Noah something, an unfunny comedian. But he asks about Biden, the removal of Trump. Will Trump leave the White House if he's not elected? And Biden discusses how the generals will remove him. What do you think that this is about with Trump? This is a man- Do, do, you, do you worry then, let me, let me ask you this, and I know this is a strange question to ask an American politician, maybe easier around the world, but have you ever considered what would happen if- the election result came out as you being the winner and Trump refused to leave? Yes, I have. And I was so damn proud. You have four chiefs of staff coming out and ripping the skin off of Trump. And you have so many rank and file military personnel saying, whoa, we're not a military state. This is not who we are. I promise you, I'm absolutely convinced they will escort him from the White House in a, in a, with great dispatch. Sleepy Joe there, pay attention. Joe Biden mentioning about the general speaking out. So there were four generals that spoke out. General Mattis, uh, General McCarthy or something like that. It's uh, General, uh, I got it here in a second. Mike Mullen, Navy Administer uh, General and uh, Admiral, sorry. And you have... Mick Raven, so there's the third, and something about Holbert, Heather Holbert, maybe? I don't know, something like that. But anyways, those are the four generals that, are, that spoke out against President Trump and him using, well, anything, just speaking out against Trump in general, because all of them spoke against him in some other way, and Colin Powell. I forgot about Colin Powell. So these, they are saying that Trump is not, he is doing everything against the Constitution and does not want to bring in peace, which is obviously false because all of them are quiet except when Obama abuses the Constitution, but they're all ticked that Trump wants to uphold the Constitution. Now, Colin Powell, and that one is like them telling us Colin Powell's not going to support President Trump. Well, he doesn't support Republicans really ever. He only supported George W. Bush so he could get in the administration. I mean, he supported Obama twice and Hillary last time, and he's going to support Biden this time. 16 years of just pure Democrats he supported. Let me know when he supports a Republican and we can have newsworthy things. But... How supporting a Democrat is nothing. These generals, though, are speaking out. Mattis, I always heard rumors he was a Democrat. So there was a new general that spoke out, though. A new general, uh, General Mark Miley, who walked with Trump in that photo op with the Bible in St. John's Church after they used National Guard to clear out, after they burned it to the ground, practically. He speaks out and apologizes. Now, this one is where I'm interested. So here goes that. Many of you saw the result of the photograph of me at Lafayette Square last week. That sparked a national debate about the role of the military in civil society. I should not have been there. My presence in that moment and in that environment created a perception of the military involved in domestic politics. As a commissioned uniformed officer, it was a mistake that I've learned from, and I sincerely hope we all can learn from it. We who wear the cloth of our nation 
come from the people of our nation. And we must hold dear the principle of an apolitical military that is so deeply rooted in the very essence of our republic. And this is not easy. It takes time and work and effort. But it may be the most important thing each and every one of us does every single day. It's a coward move. So the reason why he is, first of all, he's wrong. The military should have been used and should have been used even more. The Insurrection Act of 1807. The reason for the Insurrection Act is when civilians are getting out of line to that extent that we, it is an overthrow, which is what is going on. Literally, they have taken land. This is an insurrection. There is nothing else. Th without the claim he's saying is insurrection actually exists. Without saying it. This is a joke. This is a joke. You can't even tell me. Something's not up with that being fishy that he would speak against Trump on that. And by the way, that is Trump is his boss. Trump is the commander in chief of the military. You never speak out like that against him as being very political on his part now why would he do that why would he do that and why would biden say the military the generals will remove him just want you to sit there and simmer on that one general speaking out biden has a slip up saying generals will remove him Anarchy on the streets, defunding the police. Democrats funding and aiding these terrorists. Twitter is censoring our president. Facebook is censoring our president, not to mention, obviously, conservatives in general. The media is pushing this agenda. Fox News has moved to the left. NASCAR has moved to the left. All sports have moved to the left. We've lost our culture. The one thing we have left is right there. It's a symbol. That's a symbol. Keep America great hat, obviously, for people who can't watch it but are listening. We, they take him down and it's over. They have the culture. They haven't. There's literally nothing we can do about that. I, if generals are involved, FBI is involved, CIA is involved. I mean, just all we can do is keep fighting for the president because literally that's our last line of defense now. Anarchy galore broke out. Imagine if it was conservatives that took six blocks armed during Obama's watch. Don't you think the media would be calling us terrorists? Do you really think we would be alive today? I guarantee you, Bullet, if it was, if I led a group and did that six blocks during Obama's administration, there'd be a bullet between my eyes faster than I can blink. We do have hope. There is still hope. Because I'm never going to end, I'm not going to end on a bad note. There is hope. They have all of this coming at us. And I know, and even the world. Because as we went over, Black Lives Matter is an organization worldwide. They're getting donations from other foreign entities to support the Democrats. But we have one weapon. That's God. And I'm going to show you. Here is a uh, Trump held a camp uh, round table in Dallas yesterday and uh, I forgot who this guy was but black guy f was involved and he was discussing how uh, about God and Trump so listen to this and this is where our hope actually is I'm praying to the Holy Spirit to put words on my mouth right now and I want a nation to hear me we need the fear of God
Mr. President, you're the only Republican I've ever voted for. <laughs> And I don't just say that to make you feel good. Honestly, I, 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 that's not my goal, man. I'm saying that because you stood up for the word of God. And as believers, as the church, we have to pray for our president and have his back. When he raised that Bible up after those folks burnt that church, we are in a spiritual warfare. Yeah, that's right. We cannot fight this battle with flesh and blood. We cannot fight this battle with politics. You cannot politicize oppression. I grew up right down the street. I looked at skinheads in the eye at 13 years old. My black father went to a KKK rally to protect me. I know what racism is. So when I hear words get thrown out about white supremacy, it eats me up. Because these men are white supremacists. That's not what they look like. I'm telling black kids across America right now, we always hear we don't have black leaders. Look at this table. He's absolutely right. This is the spiritual warfare we're witnessing. It's good and evil. And it's pretty clear God is with us. If he wasn't, do you think we'd be able to withstand everything I just laid out in front of you that is attacking us? We have the one weapon that they can't defeat. The one weapon they can't argue. They can't counter. No matter what they throw at us, we still keep going. We still seem to win. We may have to go through hell to win, but we always win. So that is a thing to look positively on. Even when it feels like all the arrows have blotted out the sun and they're coming at us, we're still fine. We're still fine. No matter what they throw, just stay calm. Continue to move forward. Now, the biggest thing they should be fearing, though, is Trump is getting into the black vote. And this is going to be my final topic, and then we'll end the episode. But Trump is getting into that black vote, and the left knows it. They are petrified. That's a big reason why we're seeing the race war part. They're trying to stir that up because they know Trump got 20. Trump may have up to 40, 50 percent of the black vote, but I predict he's going to get about 18 to 20 percent when the actual vote happens but here is here is president trump during that round table in dallas discussing how school choice now this is actually a key issue for black uh youth because they have terrible they have terrible school systems because is there some racial injustices in this country hell yes there are hell yes they are there are schools are crap now it's not white people's fault for that and it's it's democrats it is democrats fault and the destruction of family in particular in the black community now putting in school choice which is what trump's going to propose is one of the biggest things to counter that is because now these schools that have pretty much I'm not saying the teachers were bad when they began they became bad because they just gave up the teachers' union protects them. But this will make it competitive where those schools will have to figure something out or else they won't have students. So here comes, uh, here's President Trump discussing that. We're renewing our call on Congress to finally enact school choice now. School choice is a big deal. Because access to education is the civil rights issue of our time. And I've heard that for 
the last, I would say, year, but it really is. It's the civil rights issue of our time, when you can have children go to a school where their parents want them to go. And it creates competition, and other schools fight harder because all of a sudden they say, wow, we're losing it. We have to fight hard. It gets better so many different ways. But there are groups of people against that. You have unions against it. You have others against it. And they're not against it for the right reasons. They're against it for a lot of the wrong reasons. And we're going to get that straight. Now, we've done a lot of it. We've had tremendous success with choice. We had He's absolutely right. I, I've been a big advocate of school choice for quite some time because it would cure a lot of issues. I'm big on competition. Competition may not be perfect, but it cures a lot of ills. It really holds people responsible for their failures. Now, this is part of what we'll get into messaging to that black community. This is why as you just saw in the previous one, the black guy say he's never voted for a Republican until Trump. He's, he's connected into it. He's connected into something. He's waking it up. He's waking up the black community that they are no longer slaves to the Democrat plantations. And here is another proponent of that is uh, Raven Jackson. Republican strategist speaking out on Trump's behalf where he just lays into mainstream media and in particular Joy Reid and Don Lemon being worse for the black community than drugs and it's quite fantastic so this will be my last clip of the day I'd like to say to you Mr. President it's kind of off the beaten path I'd like to say to all the media assembled here that I wish they would quit lying about what you've done specifically for the black community. So you got radical liberal journalists like Joy Reid from MSNBC, Don Lemon from CNN, Roland Martin, who are putting more poison into the black community than any drug dealer, who are killing more black folks than any white person with a seat over their face. How are they doing it? Spreading these lies about the economy you have, Mr. President, before the virus with a continuation of Obama. That's just factually not true. I have a degree in accounting. I keep up with the economy. They're lying. So to all these folks on MSNBC, CNN, Roland Martin, what are you afraid to have real black Republicans who know what the hell they're talking about? If you want to know the truth, if you want us to dissect the Obama economy, let's do it. And I think, Mr. President, your record would win the debate. Thank you. He, I love it. I love it. That's why I know it feels quite petrifying seeing everything that is coming against us in this 2020 election. But that's part of the episode was to show you it was all planned. This chaos was planned. It's all an act of insurrection against Trump. But ultimately, keep faith, keep moving, keep fighting. We'll win. We'll win. Because nobody, nobody at home is truly thinking, huh, no police, riots everywhere. We have a second country called Chaz, ran by a bunch of pimple poppers and a warlord rapper. No one's sitting at home and thinking, hmm, I want sleepy, rapey Joe Biden to be up there mumbling away trying to figure out where the hell he is and if he pooped his pants or not so have faith stay strong remember it's all narrative it's all a narrative all right guys that's it for the episode so have a great one i'll see you have a great weekend and i'll see you next week